NAFA's International VP talks about how the association brings needed training and education to fleets around the world. So part of the fleet um, uh, international vice president position was to travel around the world and make, uh, make contact. So, so right out of the gate, it, it seemed to work you know, fa fairly well. Um, I mean, to, to date, um, we've, uh, f you know, Phil Russo and I have uh, actually have um, had people come at the INE. We invited, so so we're kind of coordinating um, uh, contact information from around the globe, inviting them, you know, to attend the INE. So that's how we were able to sign I IAGA out of Italy, a uh, small association, but you know, clearly. It's, it's kind of the first uh, of many, we hope, that uh, we'll be signing on to, to NAFA. Um, and I think, I think more importantly, I've, I've kind, of, kind of missed this, but I think more importantly, it's not that we, we have me going out representing uh, NAFA, but it's really what NAFA stands for. And what I've found, and particularly if we can just kind of shift to, to Latin America, is I find having staff uh, in, in Latin America, there's really nowhere where they can go and get training or whatever. It's a very, there, there is training down there, but it's very close knit with the Lease Coast. So when I was actually looking to hire people in, in Latin America, specific to Brazil and Mexico, there was really nowhere I could say, you know, uh, or ask them, have you had formal training and so forth and so on. There's just virtually nothing, nothing down there. So, uh, so the whole idea or the concept of me going out was not only to promote NAFA, but promote what it offered. And that was education, um, uh, benchmark information, and so forth.